From the Manhattan Project to Microsoft, New Mexico has been on the forefront of technological innovation for decades. Our state is home to visionaries and entrepreneurs making news and breaking barriers in the fields of aerospace, bioscience, renewable energy, digital media, film, manufacturing, and so much more. This is a new series from the KRQB Media Group celebrating the spirit of enterprise, introducing you to businesses and organizations, bringing global attention and recognition to the land of enchantment. Welcome to New Mexico Frontiers. This is New Mexico Frontiers. Presented by Veris Research. Well, we start off with a trip down south to Roswell. And while we're not talking about little green men, our story does take us to the skies, where research, testing, and innovation could pave the way for a cleaner planet and a more inclusive state. Sitting on a lonely tarmac just miles from the alien capital of the world is aviation royalty. Thank you very much. This fuselage, now stripped of its wings and tail fins, was once owned by none other than the king of rock and roll, Elvis Presley. It's one of the dozens of aircraft that call the Roswell International Air Center home. Well, our storage facility, currently we have 233 aircraft. Tarmacs across the 5,000-acre campus are now home to decommissioned Airbuses, MD-80s, and 737s, a fitting representation of the Air Center's ties to the past and its eye on the future. Three months before the U.S. declared war on Japan after the attack on Pearl Harbor, the U.S. military took control of what would become the Roswell Army Airfield, and later, Walker Air Force Base. Then they transitioned into the B-17, B-24 bombers, and then later the B-29. Months after the war ended, the 509th Composite Group relocated to Roswell. Responsible for the deployment of atomic bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, the group brought the frontiers of American nuclear weapons into New Mexico's backyard. Roswell became a primary target, you know, to any adversary such as Russia. And I think that's why Goddard High School, when it was built in the late uh, 60s, was underground. Walker Air Base closed in June of 1967, taking with it much of the bustle it brought. And it would take decades for the Roswell International Air Center, a municipal airport, to lift off. Immediately we started looking for someone to rent the facilities, all the buildings out here. Slowly but surely, aviation giants like Boeing, Airbus, and Dean Baldwin brought business into the Air Center. And that business has been booming over the past decade. Three times a day, American Airlines touches down here with passengers from Dallas-Fort Worth Airport and the Phoenix Sky Harbor. Naval fighter pilots of the future are earning their wings in Beechcraft T-6 planes like this, while Air Force mainstays touch down for maintenance and training day in and day out. C-130s, F-16s, F-18s, Ospreys, Apaches, Blackhawks. Braking systems and tire testing is one of the biggest missions for the Air Center, thanks to its extra-long 13,000-foot runway. Our runway is also smooth, which is not normal. Normally, they want water to go away from the runway, but we have a special runway uh, permission here that we've worked hard to keep with the FAA. Another prominent resident at the Air Center is Sky, a company that is building the next generation of high-speed Internet through high-altitude platforms. So their mission is making a better planet and also improving people's lives. With balloons floating aloft at 65,000 feet, their research aims to bring internet equity to rural communities as well as monitoring and protecting the planet. According to their website, the research they are conducting will be able to detect greenhouse gas emissions in real time, making it possible to support, quote, enforceable, accountable, climate-friendly policies. As the world continues to emerge from the COVID pandemic and the aviation industry faces numerous challenges in the aftermath, the Roswell International Air Center is ready for the next generation of aviation research, development, and careers. Coming up, we're getting an inside look at a research company on the forefront of nuclear and microwave energy that could change the way we explore the final frontier. Veris Research is the title sponsor of New Mexico Frontiers.
Well, it's fitting that the birthplace of the atomic bomb continues to be on the forefront of nuclear energy research and development. But that's just one component of the work taking place at Virus Research, a homegrown company that is revolutionizing the application of energy itself. Sitting in a mostly nondescript storefront just off of I-40, one that used to house baby strollers and cribs, is a technological research company that could change the future of defense, aerospace research, and humanity. Various Research was founded on the idea that we could create and maintain a collaborative environment at the forefront of science and technology, where we valued high-performance employees to allow them to pursue their passions. So at the end, we could provide truly innovative technical solutions in support of the nation's defense. Founded in 2014, Virus Research has grown from a modest company of four visionary scientists to a team of more than 100 physicists, engineers, and designers, all working on the cutting edge of electromagnetic simulation and analysis, nuclear systems analysis and effects, and so much more. New Mexico, of course, is no stranger to cutting edge technology. Being home to White Sands Missile Range, Sandia National Labs, as well as Los Alamos National Labs, aerospace and defense research is as ingrained in our state's identity as, well, red or green chili. We're also a uniquely educated state. We have more PhDs per capita than any other state. That's largely due to a number of institutions like the National Labs, uh, the Air Force Research Laboratory, and also our top-notch educational institutions. 25% of Virus's workforce are PhDs, 45% hold a master's degree, and a whopping 70% of their staff were recruited right here in New Mexico. When we can keep things local in our community, it builds a stronger tie. It also just builds a stronger community. Under the seven umbrellas of Virus's research and development are directed energy testing and evaluation, including high-power microwave systems. One of the advantages they have is that they're non-lethal. So I can turn off the lights or the computer across the street, but I don't impact the people inside the building. So it offers an opportunity to do things that are non-kinetic. Can we replace bullets and bombs with radio frequency waves? Virus's space and autonomy research will also help in operations of satellites and communications, as well as applied nuclear research, which will give scientists a better understanding of energy threats peacetime application, and space exploration. But we're a big piece of the cog of the Albuquerque infrastructure that is tr really trying to push the envelope of what we can do in space, not just in terms of more satellites, but novel and more effective ways. And protecting our, our astronauts is an, a classic example of one of those techniques. Listed as one of the New Mexico Technology Council's Flying 40, among other accolades, Virus Research is approaching a decade of growth and development here in New Mexico, a state that they say offers unlimited potential in the field of science, technology, engineering, and math. Now, Virus was recently awarded a $52 million contract with the Naval Surface Warfare Center Crane Division to design and deliver testing capabilities that will ensure the U.S. system's survivability in the harshest of environments. Coming up, we are headed to Rio Rancho to learn more about a homegrown business lighting some of the biggest stages in sports. New Mexico Frontiers will be right back. All too often, we take lighting design for granted. However, practical applications take on a whole new aesthetic for one Rio Rancho startup that has lit some of the grandest stages in the sports world. More than 10 million fans from all 50 states and more than 70 countries have walked the halls of what is affectionately known as football heaven. It's a personal pride that you take when you have lit one of these buildings that kind of comes into the, the shot when they're doing a Monday Night Football. The dazzling rainbow of light that illuminates Centennial Plaza and the Pro Football Hall of Fame in Canton, Ohio, was manufactured here in this humble industrial complex just north of Rio Rancho. We're one of really a couple manufacturers that can throw light a long way in a tight pattern, uh, putting again light where you want it to and call attention to those details that, that are important to the owner of the company or the, uh, or the franchise. Chris Kreuter is Executive Vice President of Insight Lighting, 
a homegrown company established in Rio Rancho in 1991 by entrepreneur David Patterson. He had had a lighting agency here in town, so he was used to dealing with local clients, consultants, architects, with selling a variety of light fixtures, and I kind of figured out that there was a need in the marketplace for something that he could do. With just 10 employees, Patterson launched the company with the mission of developing unique lighting solutions to fill designers' needs. In a market that offered thousands of stock products, Insight Lighting made a name for themselves with asymmetrical, indirect lighting fixtures that kept a small footprint while throwing big swaths of light. Everyone loves lighting, but no one wants to see the fixtures typically. And Insight's results speak for themselves. Here in New Mexico, they've worked on the Sunport, the art project here in Albuquerque down uh, central. We did the pit, all the color changing lighting on the outside of the pit, the glass enclosed staircase. Not to mention the Presbyterian Highland Sky Bridge over central, CNM, and the Berlin High School Nanatorium. Outside the land of enchantment, Insight's portfolio is nothing short of jaw dropping. LSU Stadium, San Diego State University, we did Phoenix Sky Harbor, we did Denver International, DFW, we did the entire, all the signage for DFW, the green and blue lighting at the Holiday Inns, we did Buffalo Wild Wings. And let's not forget one of the largest stages in the sports world, the 2010 Vancouver Games bobsled track. So back in about 2008, I got a call from a lighting designer up in Vancouver. And they were trying to create a, uh, a light fixture that could take advantage of some of the most recent light tubes that were available at that point. The unique lighting and architectural demands for the track required engineers and designers at Insight to think outside the box. As if you think about it, you're laying on the luge or the skeleton or the bobsled going down, and you're trying to maneuver this sled, you don't want to have lighting become a, a detriment. You need to be able to see the course, but you don't want to have to see the lighting. The job required Insight to place more than a thousand Arita fixtures on the inside of the track's upper walls. The internal shielding and louver system blocked the direct light from the athlete's field of view. The result was an evenly lit track that didn't impede the competition or the audience's experience. It, it turned out to be pretty, uh, pretty amazing. While technological innovation, sleek design, and minimal footprints keep Insight ahead of the curve in the industry, Kreuter says it's the work environment that is the secret sauce driving the 100-plus employee enterprise, now under the guidance of the founder's sons, Jackson and Jeff. The real, the real essence of this company is, is the dynamic of the people who are committed to the same vision and uh, I see that opportunity uh, as we grow and as we get notoriety around the world of uh, the things that we can do. Now, Insight is currently working on new projects overseas, expanding their international footprint of New Mexico made design. Well, after the break, we are booking a stay at Albuquerque's latest boutique hotel, one that hit the pages of Forbes before their doors were even open. New Mexico Frontiers will be right back. New Space is the proud aerospace partner of New Mexico Frontiers. Employing chromotherapy, sustainable practices, and a bit of eccentricity, Albuquerque's latest boutique hotel is taking on the footprint of the old University Lodge on Central and coloring it with pizzazz, or zazz to be more accurate. A drive down Central Avenue in the historic Knob Hill District looks quite different than it did a decade ago. New builds have altered the mid-century landscape that, in some cases, have fallen into disrepair. Except for here, at the Hotel Zaz, where the heyday of Route 66 has been resurrected thanks to Dr. Charmaine Doris. Growing up here, literally my living room was right behind me. Um, you know, I understood the value of this property and um, we wanted to really showcase it. Doris's family purchased the then University Lodge in 1996 when she was just eight years old. We would drive up and down Route 66, putting me to sleep. <laughs> and my mom always had her eye on this building because it's so beautiful. Built in 1958, the Sleepy Bear Travel Lodge was a popular destination for travelers along the Route 66. But as interstates drew travelers away from the Mother Road, the property experienced a roller coaster of business throughout the late 20th century. I literally dreamt of this concept when I was 15. Doris held on to her vision throughout college, through medical school and early motherhood. Keeping the family tradition alive, she employed the talents of her engineer husband 
and as she says, genius toddler to create a whimsical, colorful experience for guests. The design actually first initially started with the branding. And um, I was talking to the branding team and it was during COVID, we're on a Zoom call. My daughter at the time is two years old. She's attached at my hip and she's just learning how to speak. And um, I tell our branding team that, you know, I've lived in Knob Hill majority of my life and I just want to bring it pizzazz again. And my daughter looks at me and she's like, Daz, what's that? And I was like, that's it. To make Hotel Zaz a reality, Doris and her family collaborated with more than 48 artists in the rooms and throughout the campus, many of them mother-daughter duos and women of color. So everything you see is not just a selfie background, it's also an art installation. Like their hydro room, giraffe murals, and the buzzworthy Z Lounge, which can only be accessed through a super secret method. When you book directly with us, we provide you with free drinks to enter the Z Lounge. And so in order to redeem them, you need to find the golden banana. So once you find the golden banana, you tap it three times and magically this door appears and you are entered into Z Lounge. The lounge, which is also open to the public, sits in the footprint of what used to be Doris's home as a child. You can find relics of her family's residence growing up throughout the property. A hat tip to the woman who paved the way for Doris's success. Seeing my mom being so empowering and showing me that uh, she could be a mom, you know, cook at home and also run a motel um, was incredible. Hotel Zaz has already garnered national and international attention. Forbes named the hotel one of the 77 new hotels around the world you have to see in 2023. And we weren't even open yet. And it was all based on our renderings and concept that we had to provide. And with a number of awards already under their belt, a children's book inspired by the hotel's renovation, and new chapters for the family waiting to be written. The future of Hotel Zaz looks colorful indeed. So not only will this hotel be recreated in a different world, because this is very specialized for the local community, but it will also host a sequel to the book. So we're just going to keep carrying that on. Now, Dr. Doris recommends booking your stay directly on their website, hotelzaz.com, for drink tickets and insider perks not available on other travel sites. Well, that's going to do it for us here on this episode of New Mexico Frontiers. For a full recap and more information, head over to krqe.com. Thank you for joining us.